Buenos días, Michael, and thank you for joining us today at Business Spotlight. Hi, Yavi. Pleasure to be on. I'm looking forward to the chat. Likewise. So today I have the pleasure of, introdu of to introduce Michael Savage, CEO of Channel Finance Group UK. Channel Finance Group have over 56 years of combined experience in business, commercial and corporate funding. Mike, I love the mantra you have on your website that reads, we have a passion for making your financial decisions simple. So, Mike, on that note, tell us a little bit more about what you do and for how long you've been doing it. Yeah, so we are a finance broker. We're FCA directly authorised. Um, we're a financial broker based in Scotland, the central belt of Scotland, but we cover the whole of the UK. Um, the, the website it, it basically says I backs up my ethos in, in regards to funding. Um, I'm very passionate passionate not only about getting the right result for the client but taking them through a journey which might seem very complicated there's a lot of moving parts if you mean if you can simplify that in any sort of a way and then a broker if you mean like ourselves or like any other good broker because there are a right good few out there and um, should be there to support and help nurture and um, the business growth and um, so Supporting SMEs is what we do, if you mean, and um, it's it's something that I feel very, very strongly about um, because I've, I've had and I've run businesses before. Yes. Um, I've got some very positive experiences um, and none not so much, but it, when you get to the age that I am, probably still considered a young man, but I've got 20 odd years behind me of running and kind of owning businesses. You're going to have overcame a lot of obstacles, a lot of challenges, if you mean, and not so that not everything in rainbows. Um, so that there's going to be a little bit of kind of adverse along the way. And what I mean by that is, is you, you find yourself in a difficult position, your pride might take over, you don't know who to kind of turn to. Um, so, so for me, um, in kind of getting involved in brokering and um, finance work, I've got a passion for figures. I've got a passion for kind of helping people. And I consider myself always as the man in the middle, if you mean so. And that and that's what a broker is. We, we, we know our place. We we know who we are. We know what we are. Um, and hopefully we can help businesses taking that next step, whether that's growth, whether they're kind of a plateau now, whether they need kind of a fun cheese, whether they kind of a, they need to kind of a pivot and focus on something else that's going to drive um, a different stream of business, but they need funding for it. Mm -hmm. we, we all do the best that we possibly can, and we've got the funders on on a panel to support that. Brilliant. And uh, Mike, how, how do you get into this business? What made you decide, I want to help business owners on their finances? I studied accountancy, if you mean um, university. So I've got a passion for figures. I've got a passion for numbers. Um, I am a lateral thinker. I can think outside the box. If you mean I'm a problem solver, so rather than kind of a potentially taking a job where you sit behind a desk and you you're still solving problems because that's your job. If you mean, but you're making books. If you mean, you're doing the balance sheets, you're doing the accounting, and everything else. I knew very quickly that that wasn't me, um, and I was almost like a wee bit of a caged animal. If you mean, when I was like, oh, why not advise this? Or why not, why can't we do this? Or can we not kind of talk about this? Um, and I found with brokering, you need to kind of have, you need to be energetic. So you have to sell yourself and sell your product. Um, and I think that's where I come into my own. If you mean I can sit in front of people, I can have engaging conversations. We can find out what path, the way that they want to go to, if you mean and I think given my background in business again and i'll touch on it some good some not so good um, and we can go into that later on in the conversation you make mistakes every single business owner is going to make a mistake it's not if you make a mistake it's when you make a mistake um and you have to have that bounce back ability to but you can only do that first and foremost if you've made the mistake and the resilience is there to kind of take you forward but you need yes. a good support team, a good support network around about you who has equally went through that. Um, 
I'm not saying that everybody in business goes out to make mistakes. Yeah. However, I would say that the, the, the vast majority do, if you mean, and that's the only way that you're kind of going to learn. Um, you've got guys like Richard Branson, um, Elon Musk, if you mean. Um, yes. In fact, Bill uh, Gates, these guys have all, these guys are, yeah. they've made, before they've made their money, Jeff Bezos, yes. before they've actually made profitable businesses, yeah. there's been a wee bit of a turn there, if you mean, and a shift in how they've done it, and they've learned whether they've failed or not, if you mean, or whether they've pivoted. Yeah. They've, they've taken something from that to get to where yes. they are. Yes. But they've got a good team. Yeah. In fact, if you flip that, the only way not to make a mistake is not trying anything. Well, you don't Absolutely. try anything, that's the only way you can ensure you don't make a mistake. So, uh, yeah, definitely. And this is very encouraging for, for, for entrepreneurs, business owners who will be watching this recording that, you know, to make mistakes is fine as long as you learn from them. They are lessons, really, to build your yeah. business. Um, it's, it's, it's the only way that you're going to properly learn. If you mean, I think if you make the same mistake twice, if you make the same mistake consistently, then that business might not be for you. If yeah. not, but if you, if, you, if you learn from it yes. and you grow, if you mean, and you, more importantly, you bring on people that know more than you, that have been there and done it, yeah. um, and you take, and you let go of the ego. Do you mean? So like, yeah, I'm running a business, I'm making all sorts of money, I've got a nice car outside, I've got a nice property, whatever whatever is your kind of a key driver, if you mean, you have to start with the basics first. If you mean, learn from people that has been there and done it, Yes. in the shoes that you want to walk in. If you, yes. you have to do that. Yeah, I, I love your comment of letting go your ego. Um, if you don't let go your yeah. ego, your business will never outgrow you. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. And it took me a long time to do that, Yavi. I'll be honest with you. It took me a hell of a lot of time to do that because... Yes. People start looking at you differently when you've got a business, and I'll be, there's a, a fair few that want you to fail. Do you know I mean there's a lot of people that want you to fail? Do you know what I mean so? It's keeping your friends close, but keeping your enemies closer. There's the things like that. If you mean another case, that, that that never resonated with me much until I started to kind of go on in business and I started to to do better um, within business. Um, but it's yeah, it's it, but. Some of the things that you do at an early stage in business is egotistic. The things that you might buy, how you might conduct yourself, yeah. what you might do. Um, I look back in some instances and, yeah, I, I would probably say a cringe. You look back and you think, mm, maybe that's not how I should have conducted myself or that's maybe I shouldn't have went down that route or I shouldn't have associated myself with such and such. Yes. But again, that's a massive learning curve. If yes. you mean, and you, If you don't try it, you don't yes. know if it's right or wrong for yeah, me. Definitely. It is what it is. What what is the what is yes, what what is the um how did COVID affect the business? Because you started the business just uh, just before COVID, right? Oh so yeah, we, this this is where it comes into resilience, if you mean for me. Um and I started a business in COVID. I taking on a few members of staff. I had big aspirations, I wanted to do everything particularly well. And in the midst of COVID, if you mean, um, I ended up finding out that I had a brain tumour. Um, to watch I had to go and get operated on. And I think that for me as well was life changing, if you mean. So how you view life, how you view business, how you view relationships and um, basically switched for me overnight because when you're staring into potentially an abyss, um, it, it, it kind of a, it, it factors on your mental health differently. Um, and I've got nothing about positivity. If I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm extremely resilient. If you, I can look at negatives and see the positive in every negative, uh, and that's pretty hard to do. But again, taking from your personal life and into a business life, mm. you have to have that. So if there is something that's presented in front of you, the, the stuff probably that I've been through that would have kind of destroyed 
even the best business owners. But I'm not saying nothing the best, if you mean it's just there's a different makeup, there's a different uh, DNA, there's a willingness to succeed, um, and then there's a, a, a never a, a willingness that you're never ever down. If you mean no one's ever ever going to get the last kick into me to keep to, to put me out because I'll not put myself in that position. I will fight to the bitter end yeah. if needed, if kind of required. If you mean and COVID to go back to your original point was um it was extremely tough for for me for my business um because I, I, I again I don't want to make this a pity party about myself but you have a business and you you're left with the stress of we are getting into covid with um, the government grants how am I going to support this we taking on a new office I have got the the feeling that, that I need to look after and support my people which was my members of staff how am I going to do that if I can't see the revenue coming in? Um, and people thought with, with um, COVID, if you mean, it, it, be, we, it was like a tap, if you mean, it just had a light switch. It just got switched off overnight. So it went from utilising a broker to find funding to you don't need a broker. You can go directly to your bank and your bank will give you X amount of money to for you to weather the storm. We did get access to that, but not as much as other businesses. So it was extremely tough. Um, and with the stress, the pressure and everything else that was going on going on with that, um, my health started to deteriorate, but it was not related to that. Um, I thought that you go and visit the doctors and they would say, oh, you're stressed out, Michael. Here's some medication. Go and take your paracetamol, go and take this, take your nasal sprays because we think you're having migraines and whatnot. Um, to, it became untenable, if you mean, in the house where I was having headaches that you just could not imagine. And I was putting this down to stress because my doctor had kind of told me it was stress. Um, long story short, it turned out to be um, a brain tumour, which was the size of a, basically like a golf ball. Wow, in the front lobe of my brain, which was a t- and what's more bizarre, it was a, that that should have been affecting my lateral thinking and how I process things and what I would do, um, and that had been there for up to six years. So for to run a business, and I wouldn't say effectively because it's not as if I have a phenomenal business and we're making lots and lots of money and, and all that sort of stuff. It's a great business. But there's a lot of hard work that goes in behind the scenes to, to make it kind of happen. So for me to, to be diagnosed with that, and then it was it's aggressive, and you have got this, 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 and you look at it and you think, right, I didn't even know from a, a naivety perspective, <clears throat> I didn't even know what the, the word aggressive meant in medical terms when it comes to tumours and stuff. But I, I do now know. And for anybody here watching, it effectively means that it, it could be seen as a death sentence because it's like a, an aggressive tumour of any sorts. If you mean it's, it's not a case of if it gets you, it's, 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 it's when. Um, and you're, you're basically trying to make yourself as comfortable as you possibly can. And they're doing everything that they can, if you mean to make sure that you're not in as much pain, if you mean so. Yes. I had to figure out that quite quickly um, and it was aggressive and within a week I was in hospital a doctor came in, Mr St George um, one of the, the main practitioners through kind of Glasgow phenomenal surgeon, brain surgeon um, and he phoned me up and almost like a switch again he was how you get on Michael and I said I, I fit, and, and still keeping the same Upbeatness. I said, well, to be honest with you, doctor was calling at that time because we weren't in first name terms of Mr. St. George and um, being authentic to each other. Um, he says, do you want the good news or the bad news? I said, I don't know if I can take any more bad news. So let's start with the good news. The good news is it's not aggressive. I thought, right, what does that mean? He explained it to me. Um, he said, do you want the bad news? I said, tell me the bad news. I'm going to wait in a holiday to the Caribbean for three weeks with my family. You're my first one if you come back, when I come back. Um, 
like to go through the surgery. And I went, okay. Um, I said, if you want, there's somebody else that can do it. But as I've already kind of says, I'm the like th- this is where I specialise in. And again, my mind was made up. If you're telling me that you specialise in this and you're the best, I want you. So if that's the only question that I had, is this going to kill me? Waiting around three weeks? No, it's not. I want you. Do you mean? And again, that ethos is in anything that I do. I don't want just to pacify a situation. If you mean, give me the best at my disposal. Um, so yeah, we, we we had the surgery. I got the surgery. They fully removed it, and I've never ever looked back. If you mean, and so much so, within a period of time, I was off my luck because I have to. It's not. It's not. When you're self-employed, this is what a lot of people don't realise. If you mean you don't have an, an ever ending kind of a pit of money sitting stashed under your bed or put in banks or whatever the case may be, or again, I would use the vast majority of us don't. We have to kind of just suck it up. There's not a great amount that you're putting into pensions or different uh, revenue streams that you've got. If you've got that, fantastic. If you've not, not then we're going through COVID at the same time as well. So I had to make a decision. Do I just kind of sit and let rest in my laurels and look for something else? Or do I go back and fight for my business and fight for everybody in my business and start making money? And yeah. I chose the latter, if you mean. And within six six months, seven months of me coming back, I had to get speech therapy, had to learn to kind of... A, I wouldn't say walk again. That That's playing like, pretty hard, if I'm really honest with you. But you have to go through... Um, neurological kind of a tests and whatnot to make sure that you're back on point and your balance and your sight and picking up pens and everything like that. If you mean that that's taking on a kind of a period of time. But within that, as soon as I was coming off, speaking to somebody, I'm opening up my other laptop, finding out how can I find out business here, how looking at business premises to yeah. move into. And that was my key driver. If you mean it, there was nothing that was going to keep me down because yeah. my priorities effectively changed then as well i'm thinking like i need to build a life that's going to make my daughter and my wife comfortable um, and that's the route that i chose and for that day i've just kept fighting if you mean and we've got a business um we've got offices that we've got in kind of a central belt of glasgow i employ um, four members of kind of a staff we've got a couple of consultants that work for us and i'm continuing continuing striving to grow um, but I'm also providing a platform for these guys to shine um, and earn a decent income and, and imply their trade if you mean and, and, and do what they do because this business is not just me, I've got a team Brilliant um, and the are, are people within this business that are better at certain things than I if you mean and it's, it's not a skill that I can bring to the table and it works well because we've got a collective mix um, and I, not many people say that they can love coming into their work I genuinely love working in the business and I really really enjoy working with the people that I work with and I couldn't say that two, three, four, five years ago I genuinely couldn't say that I mean now it's, it's, it's what, what I have in my outlook in the business's outlook if you mean it's a breath of fresh air and yes. it's took a yeah. long time to Yes, that's a beautiful journey, Mike, and thanks for, for sharing that. Um, no, no yes. Now, um, by the way, to people watching this, the background Mike has behind him is not a virtual background, it's a real background. So, Mike, tell us a little bit about what you've got behind you. So I, I um, I'm a registered football agent to trade. Um, I've been involved in football for well over 12, 13 years now. Um, and from kind of, I've been motivated in running football clubs to um, representing players. Again, the, the passion and the ethos I have as a person is to help others. And um, when I was with one particular football, Club, not to say that they were treating them the wrong way or whatever the case may be. I, I found myself very, very quickly more on more the side of the player. 
rather than the side of the club. Yes. Um, and I took the decision to go and do what I needed to do, um, assessments and whatnot, and partner with a, a kind of a firm, World in Motion, to um, look after footballers. That's kind of taken a wee bit of a small back seat over the last year, I would say, because you learn or through life, you, you go through challenges and whatnot, and you need to focus on what, I wouldn't say what matters to me, but you need to kind of focus on one thing that's got you, you have to kind of have stealth focus. Um, and, and that's where my focus and my vision has pure living on my business. Um, but it's in a place now where I'm going to have to adapt and pivot if you didn't kind of start getting a combination of looking after footballers. But what you can see here is, is I've got, I've got footballers like your Ross Stewart's, if you mean um, your Josh Mullins of this world, um, guys that I have looked after um, when there were like lower divisions in football, if you mean, and, and they've helped themselves because an agent, and this is where a lot of people get sidetracked, if you mean, an agent is only as good as a player or the person that he looks after. If your player or your person has got nothing of to substantiate that, if you mean, then you're not going to take, you could be the best talker, if you mean, uh, I, I don't know if you're allowed to swear here, but it's a BS, if you mean, on the world, yes. if you mean, and you can, yes. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and I'm going to kind of do this, if you mean, the reality is, is you're going to hurt your reputation and you're going to hurt your player's reputation if you put somebody into a position where they're not going to kind of kick on. However, I'm there to open doors and I'll open as many doors as they possibly want, or they can, UK-wide, um, worldwide, in fact, because I've got that reach um, through World in Motion. But you're only good as a byproduct, if you've been, and that's the player. Um, so again, it's a platform, and it's being a finance broker is not too dissimilar to being a football agent, because you're there as an intermediary. You're in, you, you're, you're the person in the middle, dealing with the player which would be the client um, from an SME perspective to the club, which would be a lender. And you're there trying to make that partnership and that relationship work. Um, so again, I could sit here and talk about myself and see how fantastic it is to go and visit these boardrooms and meet the people that I've met and everything else. But when you get down to the ergonomics of it and just the straightforwardness, if you mean, that's not why I do it. I do it is because my, my, I've got a passion for helping people. That's I can't see anything more than that. I genuinely have a passion for yeah. taking people on that next level. And that can only be done if that person's invested in it. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah, that resonates a lot with me because that's exactly what, what I do as well, helping business owners. So, yeah, that's very, very, very good. Um, so, you talked about focus. I, I like that uh, because there are many people out there that uh, suffer from uh, the shiny object syndrome. You know, they, they are running their business and then there is a sh shiny object here, they go there, another shiny object, and that detracts them from achieving their, their goals. So yeah. tell us a little bit more about, you know, this focus that ha ha has been so so good for you in, in, in building what you're building. Yeah, it's, it's never losing sight of your goals, never losing sight of your ambitions. Um, and again, we can all be sidetracked. We can all be, w one minute, if you mean you're, you're, you're walking around and you're strutting your stuff and you're kind of your, your own castle, so to speak, and you might have won a big deal and that allows or gives you the affordability to go and do something you might not have had. Fantastic. That's why we work. Reward yourself but never ever be detract away from what you're what you're there to do, if you mean. And we're all guilty of it. I, I have certainly been in the past, if you mean, where I've, I've bought a, like a, a, a very nice car that probably some might have said at that particular time that I couldn't afford it or I would looked at it. And you push yourself to the extreme just so that you can drive it. But when you look back after I've been through several circumstances and business growth and whatnot, I, it's like if I don't need it, if you mean it's not a necessity to me and I can't grow myself, then it's pretty pointless because the only person that you're going to impress is yourself in that mirror. Nobody else cares. And if I'm brutally honest with you, what it does do to the outsider world, it puts a target on your back. If you mean um, 
not only to your enemies, if you mean, or and, and what I mean by enemies is, is like keeping your, your friends close and your kind of enemies closer, because a lot of people want you to fail, but your your competition, if you mean, then sees what you're kind of doing, and, and that can derail them to maybe go and employ another member of staff or whatever the case may be. So for me, yeah, it's good. Reward yourself. If you mean, I, I'm not here to business coach anyone or tell anyone what they, they can and can't do through my experiences is make sure that you've kind of got there first if you mean and, and, and everything is going as well as it possibly can be um, and if it's if that t- if, if you reward yourself with purchasing a very nice car an audi or a mercedes or a, if, if your goal is not that high if you mean and it's a, a ford or a kia whatever it is because everyone has different targets yeah. then you do it if you mean reward yourself it's like as long as it as long as it makes sense and you can afford it, no yes. problem. Yes, definitely. That that's very very good. Um. Uh, so, Mike, what um, what would you um, advise to your eighteen year old self? My advice to my eighteen year old self would be: don't take life at that age too seriously. If you mean as you're growing up, I have taken everything that I've been into extremely serious. Um, so much so, I think that what I would say the most is get the work-life balance right early on, hmm. because that's what's going to give you the greatest success, and it's going to it, it's ultimately going to pave the way, if you mean, for a, for a successful journey. If you mean not only in business but within family life too. Yes. Um, so if I had to go back to my eighteen-year-old self, I would say work business is not that important you can't go to your daughter's for example um christmas show right. um you can, it's not that important that you can't make allowances to turn up at that very special birthday party or you're yeah. late for that birthday party Spot on. Um, all you have to particularly do is is work that but harder that day before or work that but harder the night before yes um, and allow yourself because Time is so precious. Um, aye, it's 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 precious, and you can't get that back. As soon as time's gone, it's, it's gone. gone. Yeah, it is gone. If you mean, and that's the thing that I value. Apart from my family, I value my time. If you mean, that's you can't get it back. As soon as time's gone, yeah. you can't go back and revisit. If your daughter's going to a graduation, your son. Or somebody that's very close to you, a special. Do you know what I mean um, you you can't get that time back? In fact, I, I've not been guilty of that. If you mean, and I can see myself getting a wee bit ooh, thinking about it. I've always made time, but I could have made more yes. time, um, and even more so if if something happened just now. I'm there because nothing is that important. Correct. In yeah. your family and different things. So yes. yeah, that that's yeah. it. You, you, time's precious. You can't get it back. If you mean, yes. and make, if I had to go back and visit my my eighteen year old self and just have a two minute conversation, yes, I'd be pointing. That would be the most important thing for yes. me. Yes, I think we 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 all know cases of business owners that uh, wreck their families trying to build their business when their business became the the priority, yeah, um, rather than the vehicle to to give them the lifestyle they want. Uh, brilliant. So um. Finally, what um, is there a book you've read that you would like to share with us that has had an impact in your life, either business or personal development or whatever type of book that... Uh... B- business, if you mean so, uh, I Atomic Habits is a, is a very good book, if you mean, that I have read, if you mean, and I, I regularly go back to. Um, for uh, Yeah. That, that, that that's a, a very good book if you mean and and just having a good circle of friends because you can read as many books as well as you want if you mean and i mean a circle of friends it's like business relationships and kind of a good friend relationships keep your keep your network if you mean that and keep your network to yes a one that inspires everyone within that if you mean within yes. that kind of a close close group and community if you mean and, and don't allow for kind of a neg- negativity yes um, that's your biggest advocate in your family. Yes. I mean? So yes. For I, me, 
There's not a amount of money money in the world. Yeah, be if you mean that would kind of attract me away from yes. my family. Yeah, it's just I love that. Is um, Jim Ron said you, you become the the average of the five people you spend most of your time with. So yes. in that circle of friends, you you talk about all that 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 network around you. Um, yeah. yeah, very good, very good. So, um, Mike, what uh, do you have any news or offers that you would like to share with those uh, um, businesses watching this uh, this recording? So I, th I think if, 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 as regards to like offers, we, we, we are a kind of a, a service led business. If you mean, uh, th there's not as much offers. If you mean, I, I'm not one of these guys that would say, come to me, if you mean, and I'll give you something for £50. If you mean, that, that that's not how my network works. The value is in the proposition of partnering with a business like myself and likewise, me partnering with you to get you to where you, kind of where you want to go. But the, the, the lending landscape is forever changing. Um, and I think even it costs nothing to have a, a conversation or a phone call. Yes. Um, in my door, my phone is always open um, because I, it's, it's something that, I, again, I'm passionate about. It's kind of helping other businesses, helping other people, helping people kind of grow. Um, and, yeah, don't get too disheartened with what's happening on the TV because the media have got their own platform and they've got their own objective to why they put that out. And and why I'm pointing that out, if you mean, is interest rates, the cost of living, if you mean, the rate of inflation, people might be worried, if you mean, with a lot of the kind of ever rising costs and, and different things. I, I'm not going to kind of sit here and say that it's not happening, but it's not happening to the extent that they're doing it if you mean because they've got their own vested interests and they have to look after who's plowing money into their media streams and da 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 and everything else. Yeah. Um as it stands, everything's now starting to kind of curtail and start getting down to a manageable level. It's not going to go to where it what once was. Mm -hmm. Um but for me, if you value what you do as a business owner and your proposition, then I'd value be kind of having a, a an upfront cost at the outset and saying that, well, this is my fees. And if they have to go in line with the inflation of your business to keep everything going, then that's not so much a difficult conversation, but you need to value yourself. Yeah. So um, it's, it's, it, aye, it's, I think we're, we're, we're Scottish business and even UK business, as much as it's kind of a career off and everything else, I would genuinely say, we're, go, we're all going in the right direction, if you mean, because rates are starting to come down. Yes. Banks are kind of are still lending, and there's so many different avenues to funding, should yes. you require it. Yes. And um, I wouldn't worry too much, if you mean, because there's always going to be a solution there for everybody, no matter how good or how bad your credit is. Yes. Um, because we can speak to different lenders and we can have conversations and yeah, the, the, there's there's not a one size fits all. Do you know what I mean yes. we'll make we'll, we'll we'll essentially get something to kind of affect your requirements? Brilliant. Well, uh, Mike, it's it's been a, a real pleasure to have you join us today at Business Spotlights and for sharing your experience, wins, yep. wisdom, and candor with us today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Yavia. I really really appreciate it. Thank you.